There are so many different possibilities when using Photoshop's brand new generative fill. And in today's video, I'll be sharing with you my top 10 creative ways to really utilize this tool to really enhance your photos when using Photoshop. And I'm gonna start right now. So my first tip is when you want to expand the image larger than the original canvas size and change the aspect ratio. So instead of cropping in, we're going to uncrop the image. So let's take this photo here as an example. It is a beautiful photo, but it's a portrait photo. Let's say we want to convert it into a landscape photo so we can have it as a background on our computer. But obviously we can't do that unless we crop in, but we can use generative fill. So what we can do is go over to the crop tool found on the left hand side, choose any aspect ratio you like, I'm gonna go ahead and choose 16 by nine for this example. I'm gonna go ahead and make it larger, making sure we've got transparent pixels on the left and right hand side of our image. Then what we're gonna do is go ahead and click enter. Then what we will need to do is actually expand the image. So we're gonna go ahead and use the marquee tool and we're gonna go ahead and select the transparent pixels. So we're gonna go ahead, select them on the left hand side, hold down shift so you can make a new selection. And we're gonna go ahead and select the ones on the right hand side. Then you're gonna go ahead and click generative fill. Now we can leave the actual dialog box blank in this example and then we're gonna go ahead and click generate. And as you can see, it comes up with three examples. This is option one, we've got option two here and then we've got option three. I think option three looks the most realistic. And as you can see, it looks really good. So this is the before photo, as you can see, transparent pixels, and this is the after photo. And I must say, even if you zoom in, it looks really realistic. So there's one example of how you can use generative fill to uncrop your image and expand it to any aspect ratio. Another way you can use generative fill is actually to remove objects in either the foreground or background. Now I love this photo of a girl, but let's say we actually want to remove her entirely. We can do that inside Generative Fill. So what you want to do is go over to any of the tools that you want to select. I'm going to go ahead and choose the lasso tool, which is found up here. And then what I'm gonna do is go not so carefully around the subject. And what I'm gonna do is go all the way around to the center and back again. Then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click Generative Fill. Again, you can leave it blank in this example. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and click Generate. And as you can see, she has now completely disappeared from all three examples. So this is option one, this is option two, and this is option three. I think option two definitely looks the best. And as you can see, you can remove any size object from a photo using new generative fill. You can also create effects using generative fill as well. So let's take this photo here. We wanna kind of create this beautiful reflection in the water, but the problem is at the moment, it's too choppy and the reflection doesn't look realistic. So what we can do is use the marquee tool. We're gonna to go ahead and select the water in this example. Then what we're gonna do is go ahead and click on generative fill. But this time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in a reflection in water. What this will do is Photoshop will look at it, reflect the top, and then reflect it on the bottom and add in a water effect. So to do this, all you need to do now is go ahead and click generate. And as you can see, it's made this really cool effect. Again, giving us three options. Option one, option two, and option three. I quite like option two as it looks a little bit more realistic when it comes to the water effect. And as you can see, if I do the before and the after, it looks highly realistic. And as you can see, a really simple effect. And you can reflect anything, including text, but make sure you say, a reflection in water, so you're getting that water reflect and not just a true reflection. Now you can also use Photoshop's generative fill to actually make an image from nothing. So let's take this completely blank image. It's completely white, nothing there. What we could do is use the marquee tool, select the entire image, click generative fill, and then be as specific as you can inside the dialog box. I find the more specific you are, the better you'll get the results. So in this example, all I'm gonna do is type in city at sunset, and I'm gonna go ahead and click generate. And as you can see, it has made three different versions from absolutely nothing. So we've got option one, we've got option two, which looks a lot more cityscape, and then we've got option three. I quite like option two, it looks the most realistic, but as you can see, it was from nothing. Originally, it was just a blank image and it's completely created a city in sunset. Again, the more specific you are, the better you will get the results with the new generative fill. 
You can also replace parts of your image as well, like for instance the foreground or even the sky. So let's take this photo here, it's quite a boring grey sky, it was probably taken just as the sun was setting, so what we can do is actually replace it to make it look a lot more interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to select and then what we're going to do is drop down to sky because we want to select the sky in this example. We're going to go ahead and click generative fill but inside the dialog box again try and be as specific as you can. So I'm going to say night sky with the moon because I want the moon in the photo. Then what I'm going to do is go ahead and click generate and as you can see it's done, this is awful. Look at the moon there, that does not look realistic at all and neither do the stars. So that's why luckily it gives us three options. So we've got again option two and then we've got option three. I'm gonna go for option two, but what I'd probably do is recreate the moon because it doesn't look realistic. As you can see, sometimes it is a little bit hit and miss, but you can be quite creative with it if you get the right prompt and the image comes out looking quite good. Now you can also use generative fill in portrait photography as well, either changing the eye colour, changing the lips, or even smoothing the skin. So let's take this photo here as an example. It's a, a very old portrait photo that I've taken, and this is one of the raw photos. I haven't actually edited this in any way, and we can see the skin is quite smooth. There are a few blemishes that I would actually retouch in either Photoshop or Lightroom, but we can use generative fill to speed up this process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the lasso tool. I'm just going to select a large portion of her cheek, and then I'm gonna go ahead and down to generative fill, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in smooth, skin and then I'm going to go ahead and click generate and as you can see it's made a lot smoother skin we've got option one we've got option two and we've got option three now you can use it in two different ways you can use it use it and create a large area and type in smooth skin or what you can do, which I personally prefer, is going around every single little blemish, using generative fill, leaving it blank, and then click generate. You'll find you'll probably get better results, or what you can do is actually create a frequency separation effect, which isn't using generative fill. Go ahead to this video here, or the top card, if you really wanna get professional results. But for generative fill, it's actually a lot quicker than creating a frequency separation effect. Now what I love about generative fill is you can make things from nothing. So let's take this photo here, it's a great photo of a hand, but let's say we want to add a watch onto the wrist. Well, normally you'd either have to retake the photo again or you spend ages photoshopping it, but generative fill can do absolute magic and make things out of nothing. So what we're gonna do is use the marquee tool to select the area we want to add the watch in. So we're gonna go for an area like so. We're gonna go ahead and click generative fill, but this time we're gonna be quite specific. So what I'm gonna do is add gold watch strap. Again, you can be, just say add watch, but you can choose the color, maybe you want it silver, bronze, or anything like that. And then you can say watch, watch face, for example, maybe. And then obviously I'm just gonna keep it this fairly simple in this example, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click generate. And as you can see, it has made a gold watch strap. It doesn't look as realistic, but after doing a few attempts, you'd probably get quite good results. And as you can see, it doesn't look too bad. This is the before and this is the after. So you can use it to create things as well as removing things. Generative fill has so many possibilities. Now you can also use generative fill to actually change things in your photo as well. Maybe change the color of something. For example, let's say we've got this portrait photo, we want to change the eye color for example. So what we can do is use the lasso tool, go around the eyes, be as careful as you can. Obviously we want to select both eyes, hold down shift to create a new selection. So we've got the eyes selected there. Go ahead and click generative fill and this time I'm going to just say green eyes and then I'm going to go ahead and click generate and as you can see it is now made eyes now the first ones definitely don't re re realistic they're a little bit too small so let's go for option two and let's go for option three option three looks the best but I would still probably slightly change them I'd maybe use the clone tool to make them a little bit larger but as you can see you can actually change the color of eyes lips you can even do hair just make sure the you basically spend a little bit of time creating the selection, you'll end up with better results. In this example, I'd probably make the selection a little bit smaller, so it's just selecting the eyes, otherwise it changes the size of the pupils, which isn't ideal. But as you can see, you could be really creative with it when it comes to changing colors of objects or even hairstyles. 
Now you can also turn a photo into a painting, maybe an oil painting or a watercolor or pretty much anything you like, as long as you're specific inside generative fill. So what we could do, choose a photo that you'd like to do this, go down to your quick selection tool. What we could do is go to our paint bucket. Firstly, go to the color and making sure your color is 0% hue, 0% saturation, 50% brightness, or in your RGB is 128, 128, 128. That is 50% gray. With your paint bucket tool selected, go ahead and click on your photo. It should turn red. Then go ahead and press Q for quick selection on your keyboard. Now what you want to do is go down to generative fill and type in what type of painting you want to turn the photo into. So I'm going to say oil painting. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click generate. And as you can see, it has turned this into a wacky painting, which is really interesting. So we've got option one, we've got option two. I actually really like option two. And then we've got option three, which is definitely a little bit different, uh, but yeah, awesome. You can turn a photo, just a normal photo into a really cool oil painting or any type of painting of your choice, as long as you write it down in the actual generative field dialog box. And my last tip is all about actually fixing a photo. So take this photo here as an example. You can see that it's a really old 1950s, 1960s photo, shot on film, it's got a lot of damage to it. And we can actually use generative fill to affix a lot of this damage, noise, or any dust or debris found on the film's uh, film itself. So as you can see here, we've got this kind of burn mark that you can see here. So I'm gonna go over to the lasso tool. I'm gonna to create a selection around this burn mark here. I'm gonna go ahead and click generative fill. You can either leave it blank or you can type in this, uh, the tagline remove. Then I'll go ahead and click generate. And as you can see, it completely removes it, which is really cool, while still keeping this kind of wire coming in to, maybe it's like a telephone line connecting it to the building. So we've got option one, we've got option two, and we've got option three. And there's a little bit of mark at the bottom. Again, you can spend loads of time really fixing the photo using generative fill. I just wanna remove this last mark at the bottom here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click generate fill, and I'm gonna go ahead and click generate. And as you can see, Done a really, really good job again. So we get three options, option two and option three. Probably gonna go for option three in this example, but you can actually use generative fill to restore old photos. I've got a lot of noise or, or dust or even burn marks and actually restore them to their full beauty and full potential. So all of those are really helpful. Make sure you write it down in the link in the description if you can think of any more. But two tips I would take away with using generative fill, making sure your selection is as best as you can. Don't be slapdash and make rubbish selections. The better selection, the better the outcome, as well as the more specific the prompt, the likelihood you'll get better results as well. So as long as you get a good selection and a nice specific prompt, the generative fill is an amazing tool that I would highly recommend to any photographer. Well, thank you for sticking to the end of this video. I hope you guys found it helpful and informative. Now, if you'd like to learn any more about Photoshop, Lightroom, or anything photography related, make sure to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to ring the notification bell so you guys don't miss any of my latest videos. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.